Welcome to your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast with Deanna Hobbs, founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, broadcasting live from our headquarters studios in Buffalo, New York. Visit us online at empoweringeverydaywomen.org. Today's inspiration asks the question, what does God's Word say? In challenging times and moments of uncertainty, Satan will do his best to tempt you, discourage you, and undermine your faith. But when you call to mind what the Word of God says and stand on that, you will be encouraged, empowered, and equipped to be confident and victorious in every circumstance. Welcome to this your Thursday, January 23rd, 2020 edition of your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast. My name is Deanna Hobbs, and I am bringing you the biggest smiles and the warmest greetings ever. This week has flown by. I can hardly believe it's Thursday already, and tomorrow we'll be heading into the weekend. Every day this week, it has been my true honor to spend time with you, sharing wisdom from the Word of God. Daily Cup family, you know, I get so excited about sharing the praise reports and testimonies from precious members of our global faith community with you. And this specific testimony from Belinda in Greensboro, North Carolina, was shared in our ministry newsletter Wednesday, and it impacted me so deeply, I wanted to share it here with all of you. Belinda said, for two years, I was in an abusive marriage. I was savagely beaten and told I was nothing. My ex-husband cheated on me and made me feel worthless. He knocked out my two front teeth. I was embarrassed and felt ugly. I never did leave him. He got arrested on unrelated charges and put in jail. One night I came out to an event you were speaking at in North Carolina and you prayed for me. I didn't know you before that, but a friend invited me. Your sermon and prayer transformed my life. I am now saved, strong, and a proud member of the Daily Cut family. I also got my two front teeth replaced. My life is on the right track for the first time in a long time. Thank you for making me feel inspired, encouraged, and worthy of love every day. Glory to the name of our great God. Belinda, this blessed my heart. I feel humbled and privileged to share encouragement. I am rejoicing that God delivered you out of that situation, saved you and restored you. Thank you so much for sharing. Can we get a praise break for Belinda? Powerful and inspiring testimonies like this remind us that God is transforming lives through this ministry. We are grateful for your support that keeps these broadcasts available online as a free resource to help others grow. If you are being blessed and you believe in our mission to share the gospel, sow a seed of any size at empoweringeverydaywomen.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. It is time to receive a word from God today, but first a prayer. God, our Savior, we are grateful grateful to be in your presence and gain wisdom from your word. Please anoint my lips, minister to the needs of this individual you sent to press play, and draw lost souls to Christ through your glorious gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Daily Cup family, I don't know if you've ever heard about the ketogenic diet, also simply called keto. It's really more of a lifestyle than a diet, but I tried it for the first time last year and I still eat this way. The keto lifestyle has been very helpful for me, especially when it comes to balancing my hormones and keeping inflammation down in my body after I had a hysterectomy this past summer and went through that subsequent medical crisis. Now, keto isn't right for everyone and a doctor should always be consulted if you try any new way of eating. And just in case you've never heard of it or you don't know anything about it, the keto diet is low carb, moderate protein, and high fat. Basically, you don't give your body any sugar and very few carbohydrates. And when your body doesn't have enough sugar or carbs for energy, then it's forced to burn the fat stores in your body for energy. And as I said, it's been a really, really great way of balancing my hormones and decreasing inflammation inflammation for me. Now, before keto, I used to consume so many carbs. The adjustment to keto was brutal. My body was screaming for carbs. Giving up bread was by far the worst part. Recently, I heard someone say that they can't go keto because Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. So that means you should have bread at the very least as a side dish with whatever you eat. 
And they also noted that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So therefore, bread is life and bread is Jesus. So you can't live without bread because you can't live without Jesus. Now, <laughs> let's just say, I don't think this is what Jesus meant, but in all seriousness, whatever you choose to eat naturally is not nearly as important as your spiritual diet, right? You can eat carbs, don't eat carbs. Eat sugar, don't eat sugar. As long as you feast on the word of God, which is our life-giving sustenance. It was in Matthew 4 and 4, in fact, that Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Jesus said this during a conversation with Satan. At the time, the Messiah was in the wilderness after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. And Satan came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. But Jesus didn't take that bait. He used the word of God as a tool to fight the enemy. And we ought to do the same thing. When Satan tempts us or challenges us, our first line of thought should be, what does the word of God say? What Jesus said in his response to Satan in the book of Matthew can also be found in Deuteronomy 8, 3, where God tells Israel through Moses that he allowed them to be hungry for a season in the wilderness so he could feed them with manna, which is bread from heaven, and teach them to trust his word and rely on him to provide for every need. I remember when I was in my early 20s and my husband in Kenya lost his job. It was a really hard time for us financially, and I've told you about that before. We had a new baby and didn't really know what to do. It was the worst possible time for him to lose a job. So during that season, you know what I did? I got up early every single morning at 4.30. The first thing I would do was pray, and then I would pull out my study Bible. I wanted to know, what does the Word of God say about what I'm going through? So I did a daily deep dive into to his word, and though I was financially lacking at the time, spiritually I was wealthy. When I focused on what God's word said about me and my situation, I had joy, and the storm that was raging all around me did not disturb the peace I had within me. When I read the pages of Scripture, Daily Cup Family, though my bank account said I was lacking, the word of God told me, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I trusted God to take care of our family. Family, and he did just that. You see, when you dive into the word of God, his word will tell you the opposite of what your circumstances say. Your circumstances will say you're sick, but his word says you're healed. Your circumstances will say you're defeated, but God's word says you're more than a conqueror. Your circumstances will say you'll be stuck in this wilderness forever, but the word says your due season is coming if you don't give up. Listen, it doesn't matter what what your circumstances say? What does the word of God say? As you listen today, perhaps you're going through a wilderness. Well, what does God's word say about the wilderness? Isaiah 43, 19 tells you, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So then, according to the word of God, when you're in the wilderness, you should experience expect God to make a way. When you're in a dry place, you should expect a river of blessings to flow. When you feel stuck in the same old place, expect God to do a new thing. The Word of God is a perception shaper and a perception shifter. It will change the way you look at things. God's Word has a way of elevating your expectation and heightening your sense of anticipation of what's to come. It will transform your life. It will renew your strength. It will increase your faith and position you for all God has for you. In John 6 and 63, which is what I'm stirring right into your cup of inspiration, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. As you drink down the contents of your cup, remember that there is life in his word. There is joy in his word, peace in his word, strength in his word, salvation in his word, deliverance in his word. What does the word of God say? Isaiah 40 and 8 tells
tells us the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Now let's pray. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. In spite of the storms, the challenges and setbacks they face, I speak victory, deliverance, healing, increase, blessings, and favor over them because your word declares all these things. Right now, we agree in faith that your word shall manifest in their life and bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Your daily cup of inspiration has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to yourdailycupofinspiration.com. Thank you.